Hi, my name is Paula. I wanted to um, talk to you about dream interpretation with a common sense approach. And the reason I decided to do this video is I looked up online and I had books, I've read books for many, many years, and when you look at dream books, it just doesn't even make any sense to me. And when I looked online at symbols, they would be a list of symbols, but there was no way to put them together. Or and, and then even some of the definitions of the symbols seemed not to make sense. For example, I looked up uh, magpie online, and it said that that means that you're going to have some kind of bad things happen to you. And I just don't believe that. I don't believe in that kind of uh, dream interpretation. So what I did is I, before, I looked up uh, how to learn how to determine what your means, your dreams mean to you. And I found the School of Metaphysics. Because when I looked up these other dreams, there was no way to gleam any kind of meaning out of your dreams. And I wanted some kind of meaning because I, I believe that the reason you dream is to give you a message. I think that we have evolved over many, many thousands and thousands of years, and we're still dreaming. And there's a reason why we're still dreaming, because it's important, and we need to learn from our dreams and not ignore them. And I really do believe this. So when I found the School of Metaphysics, their form of dream interpretation made so much sense to me. They use uh, what's called language of mind, and we'll go over that in a few minutes. But um, in the meantime, I just wanted to um, tell you why I'm making this video. And so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to list off a bunch of symbols and give you their meaning and let you be on your way. That's not the point of, of the video that I'm, I'm trying to make for you. So let me introduce you to the language of mind, first of all. Before we had language, even, we had pictures. Think about it. Everyone has probably seen the cave drawings uh, on TV or National Geographic, but um, that is a form of communication before we even had language. So if you saw a picture on a cave drawing, and it was a drawing of a horse. No matter where you lived, you could be in speaking any language and any country. And if you've ever seen a horse before, and you saw that picture, you would know it was a horse. You wouldn't have to be able to say the word horse. You would just know it in your mind. This is embedded in our collective subconscious, the ability to do this. And we're still doing it today. For example, let me give you a, a, a symbol that we use now. Say you saw this symbol. It's a left turn symbol. You could be in Greece. You could be in the United States. You could be in Mexico. No matter where you are on this earth, if you saw that symbol, you would know not to turn left. And so we're still, we still use that symbol. That's a current symbol. So, how do we get these symbols in our dreams? Well, we store them in our brain. And the way we do that is with our five senses. And one mental sense, attention. Attention is very important. If we put our attention on something, for example, let's use an orange. Say we put our attention on an orange, and we see the orange, we see what color it is, it's orange. We feel the orange, we peel the orange, and we hear the sound of the juices flowing. We smell the orange, then we taste the orange. All of this is stored in our brain. And once it's stored in our brain, then our dreams can use these symbols and give us messages. So, if your brain store this image, you recall it the next time you see that orange. You know it's an orange. 
And this is uh, where the subconscious pulls the symbols that it uses in the dreams. And we'll go over how to determine what a symbol means also. And, and I'm, there's a bunch of scientific evidence, but that's not the point of my video because I don't need to prove that we dream or I don't need to prove that um, uh, all the brain functions that go on while you dream. All I want to do is help you see how to determine what your dream means to you. And it's not, it's not that hard to do. We, we use our mental act of reasoning to interpret dreams. And reasoning, in fact, is a mental act. In, you, re, you use reasoning every day. Every day you use reasoning. And it's just a matter of honing that reasoning and concentrating and paying attention to your dreams. Because once you're aware and you pay attention, then you will start recalling more dreams. I promise you. Um, they will give you the insight into your mental state. Especially your mental state over the last few Days. So I want to give you a couple of rules, first of all, that make it a lot easier. Number one rule is that every dream is about the dreamer. So what that means is that if you dream about, say, your neighbor, well, you are not dreaming about your neighbor. Your neighbor is reflecting an aspect of yourself. So, anybody that is in the dream is an aspect of yourself, and everything in the dream has to do with you. So that kind of narrows it down right there. You don't have to worry about whether you're dreaming about somebody else and what they're going to do. It's all about you and your inner self. The second rule is that most every dream has to do with the days before your dream, either the day before or the day before that. So that makes it really easy, I think. I think it makes it really easy because all you have to do is narrow everything down to the last couple of days and that it's all about you. It's all about your inner self. So it makes it a lot easier to, I think, to interpret dreams. So let's give you an example, for, okay? First of all, um, I'm going to give you an example of interpreting a dream, a very easy dream. Here's your dream. Say you walked into a restaurant, and you stood in front of a buffet, and there's all this food available, and you can't decide what to get. And you're going, what in the world does that mean to me? Well, okay, we've got symbols in the dream. We've got a restaurant, and we've got food. So let's determine what food means, because food is a very, very common symbol in dreams. Symbols are born of function and purpose. And so what we want to do, we want to look in the waking life and see what the symbol's function and purpose is. Well, the function and purpose of food is to nourish your body. That's the main function of food. It always has been from the time beginning. So it's a very ancient and very um, instinctual thing that we have is food. So in our inner self, what nourishes our inner self? What nourishes our soul? Knowledge. Knowledge is the answer. Because knowledge is what we come on this earth to learn, to gain. It helps our soul progression. Now, a restaurant is a place in your mind to gain knowledge. So, if I was standing in front of a buffet and I couldn't decide what I wanted, that's indecisiveness. That would be our action, our lack of action. <laughs> but, so I would say, if this was my dream, I would say, okay, there's something happening in the last couple of days that I am indecisive about. Have I been procrastinating about something? Have I been ignoring something? 
Have I been putting my attention on something not worthwhile? Have I been, for example, have I been, instead of um, achieving my goals and desires and being productive, have I been entertaining gossip? Have I been um, reading, for example, information like People's Magazine or something like that that, that is not really conducive to learning? Well, that would be the interpretation of that dream there. And that would, that's a very, very common dream. I mean, a very common symbol. And that's how I would put it into my life. So the purpose of a dream is not just to recall it, it's not just to interpret it, but it's actually to take action on it. And that's whenever your growth happens when you start taking action on your dreams. And this is where your dream becomes personal because no matter who is dreaming about food, food is still going to mean knowledge. But the way the dream pertains to you is you look at what happened before, the couple of days before. You look at what your goals and desires are and you can put that together in a personal manner. And you can discover what you need to do because your subconscious will never lie to you. It always tells you the truth. It's your best friend. So it is trying to tell you something every time you dream. So I just wanted to um, give you this information. This is our first chapter. I'm going to get started on the second chapter where we'll discuss more about people because I know I do. I have a people in my dream. Almost every dream is not just me alone. It's me with people. And then we'll go on to discover some common symbols. There's, there's several common symbols I'm sure you've heard of. Um, being chased, your teeth falling out, uh, being fearful, why you scream, different things like that. So we'll go over those in the next few chapters, and I hope you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Because... What we dream is to make known what is unknown. And once you know something, it's just like um, if you have a scary dream, for example, real fast. If you fear is fear of the unknown. Once you know it and you shed light on it, it's not quite so fearful. And that's the way we're going to go with dreams. We want to open it up, make it available, shed some light on it. I hope you'll stick with me and enjoy the next few uh, chapters. Thank you very much.